Hi everyone. Well, Sandy and I are on vacation this week in Michigan. And as you probably know, I lecture at Florida Gulf Coast University. The university has the attendees fill out an evaluation form after each lecture. A comment that I often receive is that I'm best when I'm telling a story. So this week, what we thought we'd do is we'd tell you several stories that we've heard in our travels at Kennedy Space Center, Houston, and various functions across the United States. And these are going to be stories that we've heard from the astronauts about themselves. Welcome to Reaching for the Moon, hosted by me, Ed Grace. The first story I want to talk to you about, tell you about, is uh, Apollo 11, and it was with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. They were in the lunar module descending to the surface of the moon, when all of a sudden they got some computer alarms. Next, they were getting messages that from the ground that they're running out of fuel. They only had 60 seconds worth of fuel. Next, they only had 30 seconds worth of fuel. Finally, they landed with 13 seconds worth of fuel. After the mission was over, we asked Buzz, Buzz, what were you thinking? Here, Neil was flying the lunar module. Buzz couldn't do nothing but observe. Buzz, without hesitating, said, well, I remember all the times we were in a simulator and Neil crashed. I figured here was another crash coming. Well, fortunately, Neil did not crash and they made history. The next story I like to tell concerns Scott Altman, Scooter, and he was the commander of a shuttle flight. NASA liked to have the shuttles land at Florida if at all possible. That way they didn't have to ferry them from California, which was the alternate site, back to Florida. Well, Scott was a test pilot and a good one. If you saw the movie Top Gun, much of the stunt flying on this flight, on the movie, was done by Scott. This was after his career with NASA. Well, on this particular flight, they were finished. They were to have completed what was going to be their last orbit. They put everything away on the shuttle. And as they approached where they were supposed to start their uh, descent, the ground called up to Scott and said, hey, we got weather problems down here. We'd like you to do one more orbit. So Scott had brought a private stash of CDs. And what he decided they would do during this extra orbit they would watch a movie. So he went to his private stash, took out a movie, put it on, and the seven astronauts on the shuttle watched this movie. It's about two hours, just the time of the orbit. When they got on the ground, several of his astronaut crew came up to him and told them they didn't appreciate the movie that he had chosen. Scott told us that he had chosen Apollo 13 as the movie to watch on that last orbit and he didn't understand why they were upset, because it really had a good ending. My next story has came from uh, David Scott. David flew on Gemini 8, and he also flew on Apollo 15. But on his flight on Gemini 8, uh, it was he and Neil Armstrong were the crew. Well, they docked with an Agena rocket in space, the first docking, but then their spacecraft started to tumble. So Neil immediately undocked from the Agena, but he had to use the reverse thruster system to stop the tumbling. That forced them to cut their mission short, and they landed in an area of the Pacific where there weren't very many recovery ships. It wasn't a planned location for the landing. There was a destroyer, and this destroyer took about two hours to uh, come over to pick them up, and he picked up the capsule and put them on. Next, they were going into uh, a naval air base in Okinawa. As they approached the dock, where they were going to dock, the captain got his crew all out on deck, all dressed in their Sunday best, standing at attention, saluting. Well, guess what? They went right by the dock. They had to go down a ways. They had to turn around, come back, now they're coming back. The captain, once again, this is a special event for this captain. I mean, he, he's able to rescue this Gemini crew. So here they're coming back 
going to dock the second time. Once, once again, he's got his crew on deck. Sunday best, attention, saluting. Well, guess what? He went right by the dock again. By that time, the crew got together and decided that the captain had done too much celebrating of his rescue of the Gemini 8 crew, and they needed someone else to dock the ship, which they did. Imagine how embarrassed the Navy was that uh, that happened on Gemini 8. Okay, our next story happened here in Naples. Naples has an international film festival every year. They bring in about 50 directors who have documentaries, films. And opening night is at the Philharmonic where they feature one film. That, that particular year, the feature film was Last Man on the Moon, which is the biography of Gene Cernan. Well, prior to the showing on opening night, which is what they were doing, uh, they had a little party for Gene down at the uh, Phil. Sandy and I got invited. We went down there, and Gene was in a little room off the stage. So Sandy and I went in, and I walked up to him, and I introduced, reintroduced myself. I said, Gene, Ed Grace from MIT. His first question to me was, did I remember when we last spoke? I said, Gene, I don't remember who the per last person I spoke to out in the hall just before I came in this room. And Gene said, no, it was on Apollo 13. He was sitting in the simulator, and we had powered the command module of Apollo 13 down to save power in case we got them back for re-entry. Well, now it was time to do re-entry. Well, we had to come up with a procedure to repower the command module. So we had written it on the fly, and I was involved with that, and I was sitting on one end of the telephone. I was reading the steps out to Gene. He was in the simulator. He was checking them, and we tested them before we sent them up to Jim Lovell. And he remembered that. I mean, Gene was a great guy. We had a lot of fun that night, and uh, unfortunately, he's passed away. But... It certainly is good memories of the Apollo program in our time. Well, th thank you for watching our video tonight. Well, that brings us to the end of our stories. If you like the video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe and notification buttons to be notified every time Reaching for the Moon posts a new video. In the meantime, thank you for watching and remember always, failure is not an option. Bye.